Just a moment. You see this list? This is a list of all the mainline Pokemon games I have not played. As such, don't expect me to comment on reused assets from prior Pokemon games at all because I wouldn't recognize them. Uh, okay, outside of this message, I'm not commenting on that. While I generally don't dislike Pokemon games, I usually get more enjoyment out of certain spin-offs, like Pokemon Stadium and especially Pokemon Snap. I used to live on the same block as a blockbuster, which meant when that game came out, I was all about the Pokemon Snap station the store had that could print stickers of the photos. So when a new Pokemon Snap was announced, titled... New Pokemon Snap... Seriously, Nintendo? That was the best you could do? I was all about it, even though I didn't know the names of most of the Pokemon that would show up in it. If you've played or seen the original Pokemon Snap, this is basically that, from a gameplay standpoint at least, with a few expected additions. This game as a whole can be described as the original Pokemon Snap, but with more to do. There aren't pester balls in this one, but you can still unlock items like fruit so you can rack up littering fines, a music player, and a speed boost for the cart. There's a new item too, Illumina Orbs, which have their own effects on the Pokémon and their environment, namely around plants called Crystal Blooms. As for those environments, while the original game had 7 areas, New Pokémon Snap has 12, with some having day and night versions and an extra area specifically for tossing Illumina Orbs at whatever you see. N64 Pokémon Snap featured 63 of the original 151 Pokémon, and New Pokémon Snap has 214 Pokémon across multiple generations out of the... Wait, how many Pokémon are there? Holy shit! Well, with that many, it's no wonder you guys resorted to making random stuff like an ice cream cone and a goddamn bag of trash a Pokémon. There was something I was hoping would make the cut that didn't, but my boy Gengar made the cut, so I'm not as salty about... Uh, oh, that Gengar was female. Huh. After submitting enough decent photos for an area, it can level up, causing more Pokémon and more interactions to become available, as well as other points on those maps where a different path can be taken to see other Pokémon and different interactions. And yes, you can go back to lower research levels to look for specific things to photograph. There's also a handy in-game almanac of sorts to be able to tell where certain Pokémon you've already seen can be found if you want to get better or different photos of them. There are other little additions like being able to edit, caption, and save certain photos and upload them to an online gallery for the world to see, or fight for placement with your overall score on an online leaderboard, which I still can't believe that's a thing now. Speaking of, the scoring and ranking of photos works a bit differently. Rather than trying to get one good photo of a Pokémon, each Pokémon has four different types of poses or actions that need to be photographed to complete their album page, meaning there are over 800 photos you need to snap to complete the album. These either occur naturally or can be triggered by using certain items around certain Pokémon. Each photo is scored and then ranked according to that score, ranging from bronze up to diamond for shots over 4,000 points. Scoring is much more generous in this incarnation of Pokémon Snap, the original was infamous for Professor Oak turning away photos for the Pokémon not being centered or facing the wrong direction. But here, I couldn't get Professor Mirror to turn away a single photo, no matter how bad it was. In that regard, the game is easier, as is general progression, which is tied to earning certain amounts of points or photographing specific things other characters name drop. I only struggled to progress when I was trying to max out the levels for each region, as trying to top old photo scores or find out the different behaviors to photograph for certain Pokémon could be rough without looking up a guide. The same goes for the various requests given by characters who I don't otherwise care about, which tend to be either vague or unhelpful to the point that it seems like the other characters are actively trolling you. Progression would be simpler if not for one thing. While each Pokémon has four behaviors, and thus four ways to score points, for every run through an area, only one photograph of them can be selected for the professor to judge. Numerous times I would catch two or three behaviors for a single Pokémon, and have to decide which ones would get thrown in the trash. Score Bunny sleeping on a Torterra? I like your photo positioning. That's why it was so hard to cut you. 
Another common issue is that the viewfinder will lock onto the first Pokemon it sees and assume that's the one you're trying to take a photo of. This becomes frustrating at times when different Pokemon are next to each other, and the great photo you thought you took of the Pokemon in the middle of the frame actually counted as a shot of the Pokemon that was behind it. New Pokemon Snap gives the faintest effort of some kind of story relating to a previous explorer, which it does follow throughout, but it also introduces characters like Phil, who is supposedly some kind of rival, but spends the bulk of the game doing nothing but being envious of your photographs. His dialogue for 95% of the game can be summarized as, Oh man! And I initially lamented the lack of Todd Snap as the player character, but there is something Todd related in the game which sort of makes up for it. Fortunately, those were my only gripes with the game that couldn't be dealt with otherwise. In terms of controls, I thought that the viewfinder's movement sensitivity was way too low, but that was easy to fix with a quick trip to the options menu. Some of the voices were grating to me, but there's a no voices option to fix that as well. Whether new Pokemon Snap will be worth it to you is ultimately down to how much time you'll spend with it. I don't like the idea of trying to quantify fun, but I logged about 12 hours on my first playthrough and was invested virtually the entire time, so there's no buyer's remorse on my end. Then again, I'm one of those people who finds this photography game to be more fun than most mainline Pokemon games, so make of that what you would. Oh, that must be the hardcore Pokemon fans offering their rebuttal to my last statement. If you need me, I'll be in my bunker.